Welcome to Mad About Money. I'm Maddie Alexander-Grout and this is the podcast where we talk to interesting people about their interesting money stories. I am here with Sarah Jane Lewis, who is Etsy queen. She, There is nothing she doesn't know about Etsy and I'm super excited to talk to her about it because I'm going to be starting my Etsy journey soon. So I think we're going to have a little bit of a chat about that as well. Um, Sarah Jane, tell me a little bit about you first. Yes. So as you said, I am SJ the Etsy queen. You'll find me on social media as that. I have multiple Etsy shops and I am absolutely passionate about helping crafters and artists turn their passions into cash. So that is my main drive in life. Amazing. I I absolutely love this because I know that a lot of my a lot of my listeners are people who have crafty businesses. So let's talk a little bit about your journey. What's your money story? Thinking about this, when you asked the question, it started very, very early on. So the first time that obviously as a kid, you get pocket money and things like that. And it never seems quite real, you know, because the money is for sweets. And there was always different instances in my life that I had money and then it would either go because we had a hard upbringing. You know, my my dad was in the Navy. My mum was at home. And I think sometimes pocket money was given and then sometimes taken back in the night (laughs) because it needed to pay pay the bills, which sometimes like looking back now, you think, oh, like you have maybe a negative connotation with money. Um, But I think the the biggest thing kind of more as an adult is being 18 years old and I was at college and my mum said, you have to get a credit card. You need to get a credit card because you need to start building credit against your name. So if you get a credit card, then uh, you'll be able to get things later on in life. But fill in this application form and she sat there and back in the day, you literally had a piece of paper and you had to fill it in and sign it. And I remember so clearly doing that in my bedroom. (laughs) And uh, that was the start of my debt journey as such. So (sighs) £500 limit lasted all of like maybe a month. Um, Oh, wow. And ever since then, up until uh, December 2023, I've been in debt. So December 2023, completely debt free. And I'm happy about that. But 18 years old to 41 years old in peaks and troughs of debt from 500 pounds up to about 60 grand and wow yeah it's been up and it's been down and the the reoccurring theme is having that debt having that loan always living beyond your means never really understanding where your money's going because you bury your head in the sand and everything you need right now like there's no planning or no um well, I don't really need it. You know, that spontaneity around yes. having ADHD, like you need that endorphin fix of like, oh, I've got that thing. And you kind of have this mental block of, I don't know how I'm going to pay for it. I'll just stick it on a credit card. And there's the, always this notion with me, especially, is it's not real money and it's not, yeah. I'll pay it back, but it's not money, if that makes sense. It's a real disconnect between actually your money and this, debt money Um, and I think for a lot of people it just you just add it on and you think oh I've only got I've got a bit of debt I'll just add more and what's another 500 quid what's another grand what's another this that and the other and uh, yes I think the most at one point which was about six years ago was about 60 odd thousand pounds in debt so how did you manage to clear that so with that particular occasion um I I was going through a divorce so it was the sale of or my ex-husband buying me out of my old property that allowed me to pay off a big chunk of that I still had debt and Mm. still really hadn't learned my lessons really so still had credit cards still had store cards still had loans um and it wasn't really until two years ago that I bit the bullet moved in with my other half who's fantastic and very against debt understanding and sympathetic to my situation um but was like right we'll clear as much as we can but what's left we'll put onto a zero credit card direct debit it out that credit card never gets used it literally stays still stuck to the piece of paper it never sees yes. the day yeah. and forget about it and that's what I did for the last two years and it worked I never added to it I just forgot about it 
and quite quickly you know time goes really really quickly especially as you get older um it got paid off and that was phenomenal and that was such a nice feeling and I really really do thank my partner uh for helping me achieve that and realizing that you can still have nice things but sometimes you have to plan for it sometimes you have to wait for it or you just don't have it it's like not that important <laughs> And and sometimes it just needs that person to help and support you to kind of get you onto that right track. So I completely agree that, you know, when you talk to somebody about it and you've got somebody supporting you, it makes life so much easier. You can kind of use them as like a sounding board or do I buy this thing? Do I not buy this thing? Um, and they kind of keep us in check a bit, don't they? Um, I think one of the, one of the reasons why I started Mad About Money app was because when I paid off my big chunk of debt, I did it all on my own. Mm. Um, and I did it. It took me four and a half years. But I think if I'd have had some accountability and some people to share the wins with, people to share the lows, because there are lows when you're paying off debt. Um, you know, sometimes it can be really bloody lonely and you think, oh, why am I bothering? It's only going down by like £10 a month or whatever. You know, it, you need you need somebody to actually think with you and be like, do you know what? Even if you're paying ten pounds a month off your debts, you're still paying them off. Yes. Um, as long as they're not, you know, accruing more interest, which is where the zero percent comes in, and they're so blooming useful. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I had I had the opposite with with my mum. My mum said to me, never get a credit card, never get into debt, um, and that just made me want to go the other way. So that's why I got into <laughs> mine. But I think it's so important now that. Like when we're talking to children about money, we are talking to them about why, like the why behind it. Like, why should you get a credit card? Why shouldn't you get a credit card? How do you manage that credit card when you have it? Um, and how do you make it work to your advantage? Because, you know, saying to kids don't ever get a credit card is quite unrealistic nowadays, but it's about helping them to understand what that credit card means mm. what it can be used for the good it can bring but mm. also the bad that it can bring as well so it's it's very interesting I think I mean personally for my children and learning from my experience I wouldn't ever say uh get a credit card yeah. but I do something because I know how dangerous it is and knowing my daughter especially she likes to shop I mean she's only 12 she's very fashion conscious makeup conscious even now um I know how easy it is to slip down that route so I personally wouldn't say it's a discussion we would have and if it was to ever happen it would be done together and it would be for a big purchase you know like a yes. car or you know something that's going to bring purpose and value not just shit <laughs> that's what absolutely I spend a lot of money on shit um, there are ways there are ways that that kids and teenagers can build up their credit rating without getting a credit card i mean yes. mobile phone contract um yes. netflix yeah. like even like anything oh, that's on a subscription okay, okay. Um, you know even because if you don't pay your netflix account like you know it will you know yes it just just gets cancelled but it's all of these things that you pay um you know even things like like klarna so you know klarna yes. is a dangerous beast if you let it be dangerous but if you have teenagers and they want to buy something and they do it in an informed and conscious way um having one Klarna thing running at one time mm -hmm. with a spread over three months or spread over a year can actually be a really good way for kids to actually build their credit rating um, oh, that's interesting there is there is also um a really great uh, thing that we called lockbox um, which you can use to um to to build your credit rating and it is also phenomenal to help you to save as well oh, okay. um, so basically with with lockbox it's like a reverse credit card so they technically loan you the money so say for example you got a 500 pound lockbox mm -hmm. um, you would say right i want to pay off this much over over a year they don't give you the loan until the end of the credit agreement so essentially you pay it off monthly mm -hmm. you set whatever you want to pay and then it saves it into an account it builds okay. your credit rating but at the end you get the money that you've paid so it's a it's a way of kind of building up your savings part oh, okay 
it's very interesting. It's a really, really good company, actually. I mean, there is a small fee involved. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's clever. Well, one yeah. thing that I do with my kids now is that any birthday money that they have, we have a, I can't remember the name of the app. It's an app on my phone, uh, Hyperjar. Yes, Hyperjar is awesome. Um, and any money that comes in gets split, split between jars. So they have like a spending jar and a savings jar. And I've always said to them, like, it goes 50-50. Like, yeah. yes, it's your birthday money. Yes, it's your Christmas money. But at the same time, put that money to use. So put it in a savings jar and then you still have some money to spend. Because I learned this really nifty trick years ago um, for a late, from a lady called um, something sweet, Claire Sweet, that's it. She oh, did... Claire's coming on my podcast. Very oh, sweet. is she? We oh, love Claire. <laughs> yeah, well, I saw her talk at Be Inspired, Danny Wallace's um, annual conference that she has. And she really made me think about a particular system that she helps people with, and it's having these pots of money. Yes. So what she says, if you have debt, you have debt. But that doesn't mean to say you need to you stop spend. your life. Absolutely. So put, put, have different pots in your life. So make sure that all your bills are paid. You know, when your money comes in, all your bills are paid. But in the other pots, have a pot for spending, you know, like on oh, going to the cinema, a pot for paying off your debt, a pot for buying some clothes. But allocate that money out each month to different things. Either save up those pots and have a bit of a splurge or... Um, spend it each month that way you're still paying off your debt but you're still living at the same time because there's nothing worse yeah just being in that position where you just think the whole world is out having a massive party and you're at home eating you're at home beans. scrimping and saving yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. and it's a horrible feeling and if anything that adds to your debt because you it's only so long you can do it and then you go, fuck it, I'm just going to go and like... It's not sustainable. It yeah, exactly. No, it's not sustainable. Exactly. So so I, I do exactly that. Um, and I do half of my pots um, online and I do the other half of my pots in cash. So I take out my fun fund. So okay. I have a fund for festivals, for pub, for beauty treatments, for ice creams, <laughs> for um things for the kids so like you know things like soft play and bits and bobs mm -hmm. so I budget for literally everything so that when I spend my money there is no guilt involved and it's always really conscious yes and I think that, that is the word that that's my word of the year conscious everything needs to be conscious mm -hmm. uh, you know whatever decision you're making whether it's in your personal finances or your business finances you need to weigh up the pros and cons um, and actually like work out is this what I need to do um, and if you don't have enough money um, and you know you can't save for those pots then how can you make some additional revenue how can you make some income because especially with things like Etsy there are you know we had Lisa Johnson on the podcast last week talking oh, about wow. cool. talking about um, passive revenue and yeah. you know in my in my mind Etsy is the perfect place for you to do that because people you know you can you can create you know you don't even have to be a crafter or a you know somebody who actually sells a physical product you can create digital products to help you to sell um so I mean I've got a planner that's about to come out which I'm mm -hmm. going to be selling on Etsy mm -hmm. um, I've also got some digital money downloads I've got some uh some TikTok tips and things like that that I'm thinking that you know I oh. might just give it a try yeah um, because it's that passive income, isn't it? I mean, yes, you have to build the thing to start with. Yes. Uh, but once you put it on Etsy, that's when it, you know, when things can change. Uh, exactly. So tell me a bit about your journey to Etsy. How did that come about? So I've been online. I've had various businesses over the years. And I came to a point where I was just a bit done in from social media. You've mm. been there yourself, you know. Oh, God, yeah. The comments, the trolls, the everybody wanted a piece of you for nothing and yeah. um it really got to me I just moved into this house with my partner and the kids you know we have blended family two families coming together and I just wanted a break from social media I just wanted a break from just bearing my soul constantly yeah so I, I'd stopped everything and said to the world that's it I'm coming off social media and not doing my businesses, I'm just going to focus on my day job, my corporate job, and focus on the family. Those are the things that I'm going to do. And it was fantastic. It was really, really great. Um, really helped me just kind of get back to who I am. But I am an entrepreneur at heart. I do have ADHD. There's only 
so much like my brain power can do without actually creating something or doing something or helping people. Yeah. Uh, so the start of that particular journey was going down a YouTube wormhole of realizing that Etsy was a potential platform that I didn't need to be visible anywhere. I didn't need a social media. No. I didn't, I could just create a shop and sell my stuff quite quietly and nobody would need to know. So I started there and I did it really well. I made my first thousand pounds and I was like, amazing. Yeah. like this is amazing. I'm going to create another shop. Um, and then I created another one and I created another one because the way that Etsy works and way with any business, really, it, one shop solved a particular problem and it was focused to one type of customer. Well, my equipment, all the things that I could do, my cricket machine, my printer, my postage machine, all my supplies, I could repurpose them and create other things. So then I created another shop. Um, the first shop was dedicated to personalized art prints. Um, so Ooh. people could have like their song lyrics, like their favorite song or the wedding song put onto a print. And um, uh, I've shared. got that. I've got one of those. In fact, my husband tends to buy me stuff like that for our wedding oh, anniversaries. And I have one. I wonder if it's one of yours. Oh, you never know. Yeah. You have to show also, me. I've also got this cushion that I sit on, which has lyrics on it. Oh, oh, that's lovely. Yeah. That oh. is um, what is oh, that's the that, that's the lyrics. Sorry, to, to, to flash my belly at you there. That is the <laughs> lyrics to Evelyn by Foo Fighters on my bottom. Oh. Oh, <laughs> Not actually on my bottom, but. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so that shop was went really well, and then the next shop. I'm very much into organisation. You know, again ADHD. Like when I'm on a clean and everything's in its place and everything's labelled, like oh, the satisfaction from that is amazing. So I was like, I'm going to create personalised labels. So I've got my Cricut machine, got my printer. So I do that. And the most popular thing around there is just, you know, like in the kitchen, canisters with like tea, coffee, cereal. Yes. People love yeah. that. So I do that. And then the next shop was sweets and chocolates and gifts. So we love those. Uh, you can mix. <laughs> and then the next one was digital downloads um what digital downloads did you do I started off this one was a bit of a flop to start with I started off with Airbnb um signage and this okay. is a top tip to anybody do not go on to Etsy see something's trending and think oh I can do that even if you have no idea or connection to it I don't have an Airbnb I just saw people making shit loads of money and I was like oh my god I'll do that um, yeah, complete and utter flop. And I had no interest in it, really. Um, and that was the downside is that I wasn't particularly interested. I just thought, mm. create the digital download. I'll make loads of money. Won't have to do anything. Doesn't work like that. No. Um, so then I turned uh, the stuff that I had done in regards to how to run an Etsy shop, my digital courses into the downloads on there. Um, what else did I do? What's the other one? Greeting cards. That's it. one. Oh, nice. Um, so greeting cards I do as well. And it's brilliant. I did, and for me, that allowed me to kind of just have multiple ways to earn money. But in my usual fashion, I just wanted to share that with other people as well. I saw that there was a gap in the market. There was people like me that wanted to earn a bit of money that... The fact the internet is full of get rich quick schemes. Now, this is another part of my money story in regards to the number of times I've fallen for that in regards to I've seen the advert, I've seen the program, just do this, 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 and you make loads of money. It's complete bollocks. Anything that yeah, it is, yeah. That you'll make X amount of money within a day or two or a week or whatever, just do this simple one, two, three thing and you'll be like, you'll get your money yeah. back. And I was really anti that, really anti, because um, it encourages people to get into more debt. It and I does, didn't yeah. want to do that. I wanted to show people, actually, this is the reality of having a side hustle. It's not easy. It's not simple. But if you, you enjoy can make it, the money. Yeah. yeah, you can make the money. But if you enjoy it and you're passionate about what you do, it's not just about the money. That will come. Um, I found it very good for my mental health in regards mm. to physically creating something and shipping it out I had a corporate job a day job that I absolutely hated which I have since le left what were um, you doing I was a project manager in automation and AI for a telecoms company oh. uh, I mean it was all right it kept it, it got me through my divorce in regards to I was a single mom I had a decent yeah it was reliable yeah. income 
exactly kind of that corporate world ever since I was younger has kind of kept me going and and pay, to be honest with you it's paid for all the debt in some shape or form yeah um, but um what I wanted to do was just help people realize that the whole joy of making something and selling it was more than just a get rich quick scheme so hence I went from having my own shops and not being on social media to going actually <laughs> I can help you and I really want to help you because I recognize the frustration as being a single mom I recognize the frustration of being in debt I recognize the frustration of not having job satisfaction and in actual fact yes you may be a teacher yes you may be a project manager yes you may be I don't know work in Sainsbury's but you've got this creativity in you that yeah. you can actually make money from like you might like painting you might like um artistic stuff on your computer and turn it into cards you might like stickers you know all those things yeah. it's possible to kind of fill that cup as such in you to get the joy from from something in life um and then make money from that and that could replace your income if you do it in the right way and I'm going to help you do that um and I think the combination of that kind of helping people find joy in something because I recognize you know life isn't nice life is hard um I'm coming up to a few anniversaries at the moment of my divorce you know losing a baby mm. all those things and it can be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. It can be hard to see the future when you have crap and sadness and trauma in your life. Yeah. Covered in debt as well. Like you think, what's the point? You know, what's the purpose of all of this? So I'm very much passionate about giving people that hope and inspiration and something that's not financially driven, but more joy driven. Does that make sense? makes absolute sense so um so i i put out a post on facebook last week um i used to paint um i used to paint all the time um never for any money i just used to paint stuff like if it was a friend's birthday i'd make them a painting if it was my husband's birthday i'd do him something like and i loved painting but i never thought about doing it for money and the other day i posted a picture which was an old painting that i did um, and I had three people message me to say, do you still have that? Can I buy it? And I was oh, like, wow, I don't have it anymore. But if I did, I would just give it to you. And then I thought about it. And I thought, actually, I really bloody love painting and I love making money. And like, maybe I could start doing that again. Um, 100%. So something. And I, and I thought about it and I thought about like my ADHD audience and how much we love rainbows and colours and like all of the brightness. And I thought I could do something around dopamine painting because it gives me dopamine doing it yeah. I want somebody to get dopamine from looking at it so I thought like my rainbow stuff like everything about me is all rainbow so maybe I do some rainbow paintings and see what happens um, and those rainbow paintings then you could photograph and then turn them into digital products that you could then put onto greeting cards and stickers and t-shirts and bags ooh, and like... don't give me too many ideas my <laughs> brain goes I'm going to start a rainbow business now and I'm going to do this and I'm like oh, I've already got two businesses I can't cope with anything else <laughs> I know no tell me about it tell me about it but, but the thing is though you you do have to follow your passions and this is the thing that I teach people when we're when, you know when we're talking about starting a business people are like but I don't I don't know how to do a business and I'm like well I didn't know how to do a business when I first started I was just passionate about helping people to make make money helping people to save money and I found a way to get that into a business and when you know what you're good at and when, when you know what you like you can make a business because there's going to be other people that like the thing that you like. So 100%. And surround yourself in people that are good in business. You know, you, you can follow people. The, the internet has made it so accessible that even if you're on a budget, you can learn and absorb from other people and go from there. But also, if you've got a bit of money, then do invest in yourself to short yeah. it. Um, 100%. Okay. You don't need loads of money to start a business now. Um, you know, I think, I mean, you do if you're going to start a tech business. Um, so, I mean, Mad About Money app costs a lot to run and it's hard to oh, run. Okay. And, you know, we started it on a very, very small budget. I started it with my earnings from TikTok. And, you know, now we're getting to a stage where we're like, shit, 
we're going to need to make some money from this. Otherwise, it might not stick around. Um, but then there are other businesses that I've started. So, you know, my, you know, my ADHD coaching, for example. So that mm-hmm. is and has been for the last year all about my personal experience. So I didn't have any qualifications until really recently. Um, then I went and did my neurodiversity um, accreditation. So now I am accredited in that. And that accreditation cost me like £600 mm-hmm. um, and a lot of hours. <laughs> but uh that was something that I did fairly cheaply my Mm -hmm. TikTok business free I started my TikTok business for free and now I make regularly between 500 pound and five grand a month from my TikTok (gasps) business wow yeah so I mean that's from you know but I teach people how to grow their audience yeah because it's all about the audience growth if you've got the audience you can sell stuff to them you can sell on tiktok shop you can you can actually monetize your content Mm -hmm. um you can make money through lives you can make money through the back end so i get my people on tiktok who are not growing that fast to come to me for coaching so Mm -hmm. i coach people on tiktok and everything i do is neuro inclusive so Mm -hmm. it's very much for people who don't like traditional coaching I don't like traditional coaching. It's too overwhelming. It's too long. You know, we try and make the sessions shorter and try and make them more valuable so that you don't get overwhelmed with too much shit. Yes. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, it's that it's that thing. But I started that business from scratch and it's now making money and it's profitable. And, you know, it's it's really great. You know, I'm on my on my journey to 100K this year, which I think I'm Ooh. actually for the first time in like five years because the other things have not been going that well um you know I'm not one of those coaches that's like I make millions of pounds la 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 no no I'm the same I'm the same I don't pretend to be uh, no yeah. and the thing is though I make enough money to pay for my family to eat to enjoy my yeah. life um and you know I'm not massively materialistic I mean everybody wants to earn more money to have more holidays etc and you know mm-hmm. I am working towards making that more you know that that see that word thing that we talked about earlier where you yes. can't get your that was an example I'm like what am I trying to say what am I trying to say (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm actually now um trying my best to make more passive revenue um so digital downloads um membership there is going to be a um a new membership which is coming for mad about money Um, there is a new membership that is coming for my tiktok stuff which is quite exciting yeah just the bits and bobs um, but but it's something that you know Etsy is something that can really fit into that. One hundred percent. So how do people work with you, and how can you help people? So um, several things. As with everybody, I have free freebies. Um, so you can get onto my mailing list and download a guide, which is how to optimize your Etsy shop, which is perfect for people that are curious or just starting out because it takes you through literally everything that you need to consider and do when you open up an Etsy shop and then I have turned all that content into a digital course so like you said nice. about being ND friendly this is um little bite-sized videos that literally shows you step by step click by click what to do and the things to consider um you can't just throw an Etsy shop and expect it to work. As with everything at the moment, it all comes down to the algorithm. It all comes down to having and certain effort key as well. elements. Yes. Um, so I go through all those things to just make sure that you cover off all those fundamentals for the algorithm. So the Etsy platform understands who you are, what you do, and where to put your products. So that's yes. the digital course. I also have a membership because people need accountability they need um help and support so people tend to come on this journey of purchasing the course they come into my membership which again is a bargain price of seven pounds a month because nice. i need I to know. be in that membership i'm coming yeah, well be, sign helps, me up <laughs> it helps people still be in the room and not be overwhelmed by it if they don't show up yes so I'm there to support and help them with it my goal is to get that to a thousand members by the end of this year because nice there's eight million active sellers on Etsy it's hard to stand out in today's world but it doesn't mean to say it's not impossible um Mm. and then I have my coaching I absolutely love my coaching so I work with people one-to-one like this we talk through I go through your shop with you literally step by step it's very personalized to what you do and um help you with your social media uh and also i help build shopify sites or i will build your shopify site from the ground up so what i promote for people is 
make sure that you have multiple income streams. Do not have all your eggs in one basket. You just kind of articulated quite clearly, like having different ways to earn money is really, really important. I'm very much of the same uh, ilk in regards to Etsy is a great platform, but where else could you sell your stuff? Like repurpose all your goods and content and material on other platforms. You've got eBay, you've got um, Amazon Handmade. Um, and ultimately, you want to have your own piece of e-commerce real estate out there in a digital mm. form with a Shopify site that you can direct all that traffic to, um, yes. which you have more control over as well. So again, it spreads that opportunity to reach more people wherever people like to shop and sell your goods across the world. Um, and in 2024, it's just more than possible to do that sat here at your desk without yeah. go anywhere else or do anything else absolutely um so a couple, couple of things so um shopify i don't know that much about shopify if i'm being honest because i've never really sold like actual products can you sell digital products on shopify as well oh you've just muted yourself <laughs> Oh, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I was going <laughs> to sneeze and I think I, I need to. Um, yeah, okay, makes, yeah, makes sense. Um, I don't, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't done it myself, but that is no. a very, very good question. Um, there's things like Stan Store. Which yes, is more... I was just about to mention that. So I have I have Stan Store for mine um, and I sell my coaching packages through it. I sell um, TikTok um Again, forgot the word for it. Like I, I do basically like reviews of people's TikTok. So basically like a TikTok kind of audit. surgery. Yeah. Like an audit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, an audit is probably the best way to call it. But yeah, I call it a TikTok surgery uh, where I go and I analyze people's TikToks and I give them like tangible feedback on what they need to do to grow. Mm-hmm. um and people find that really fun um and I've also got freebies on there I've got like um, a walkthrough for access to work to help people to get support oh. if they're neurodivergent condition I've just um, got my uh, lady allocated to be from access to work yesterday ooh, literally amazing. I've... yes amazing. so that's that is that's great news really great news um but yes yeah, so and I've got a walkthrough video on how to apply I've got a walkthrough video on the process and like what you should ask for and all of those kind of things um and I've also got a um making money online freebie as well so like yeah oh, I mean brilliant. it's really great for growing your audience um but yeah Shopify is something that I've never really got that into but I think maybe because my stand store is kind of working for me Oh, um, you have to tell me more about your stand store. I mean, it's yeah. something, I thought it was more American based. Am I wrong? Well, I think it is. Um, but I've started using it and I've grown my audience by 300 people, 300 email addresses in the last two weeks. So oh, really? Nobody's bought anything from it yet, though. So I'm a bit oh. like, hmm, we'll, I'll wait okay. to see how that works. Because normally people just contact me directly about coaching. Yeah. Um, but I just thought, hmm interesting i'm gonna try it and see how it works because i no, like no, the fact definitely that it's, that it's one click um but i am also documenting my journey with stand store um i mean so far you know if i can get people into the thing that i'm terrible at is email marketing i'm awful at it because i'm such a front-end person i don't like the back end <laughs> <laughs> i'm very much like hey come and watch my content and then i'm like oh yeah everyone join my audience and then i'm like forget to email them terrible. oh but no I reminded You're- myself in your emails you redirect them to your content yes that, content. that's basically what I do uh, yeah. it's like a big a big loop of getting people in um, and that's all you need to do in. keep it simple keep it very very yeah. simple it doesn't need to be over yeah. doesn't, you don't need to write war and peace nobody's got time for that I can't stand emails that come through that are like oh my god just get to the point just tell me and I, I'm very much like that in my copy and my websites and my emails like here's the thing here's the link go and buy it <laughs> yeah it's it's, yeah. it's a it's a lot it's a lot easier when you do it like that um but I, I think oh you, you hear so many people talking about funnels and email marketing and the thing is you know deep down in your heart that actually the people who are doing email marketing are the people who are probably doing quite well um but for me I'm like I have ADHD and I hate emails and I don't want to do it I'm like <laughs> Sophie my Sophie is amazing so I've got a, um, a virtual assistant Sophie yeah. she's an access she's an access to work person so mm-hmm. she's paid for by the government which I love and she is just a legend when it comes to all things behind the scenes so Brilliant. everybody needs a Sophie uh, 
if anyone needs a Sophie, like message me and I'll make sure that I see if she's free. But she is mainly mine, so don't don't. <laughs> no. Oh well, it's been so lovely having you on today, and thank you so much. Um, what's next for you? What is next to me? Um, grow my membership. Uh, yeah, I'm starting a mastermind. So for those people that are at a certain level on Etsy that want to grow their business, want to expand, that is the next thing. The Crafty Queens Mastermind. Ooh, so nice. the wait list is out there if people want to jump onto that. Be uh, hand picked people for a very very small group of people. Um, I have a number of clients that are absolutely phenomenal that are just powerhouses of women, you know, mums that are really driven to have a an online business and have mm. the most phenomenal products. Nice. And I want to help more women like that, you know, that are just want to just make it work and they've got yes. a real goal and purpose. Um, those are that's my ideal client if I was to give some kind of marketing speech to that yeah Uh, (laughs) but no that's the the next thing is the mastermind and just continue to help people I think the the world's changed a lot having a nine-to-five the security is not like there so much anymore I think if you can focus on what you're passionate about and have multiple ways to earn money from that then life's going to be brighter and happier no matter what comes your way and life's never going to be simple it's always going to be a roller coaster but if you personally can get some joy in the work that you do because yes. I was told you're not meant to enjoy work life's meant to be hard and I fucking like, love what I do like I absolutely me too. Like, me I too. Up in the morning and I just love it and I'm like I just want to go and I just want to make money and I love it and it, it's great but it's all the thing is though there is most definitely a fine line between like just being in it to make money and actually loving what you do and I feel like both of us are very much like yes we love what we do we love providing value we like helping our audience we like doing the thing that we do Um, And it's really important for anybody who's starting a business, don't go into it just because you want to make money because your passion will die and then your money will die. You need to make sure that you're passionate about the thing that you're doing because otherwise it won't last. Like I launched a parenting app last year um, because I thought this is going to be a great way to make money. I love it. It's really great. I mean, I did make money from it and I ended up selling that business and I sold it for a fair amount. Um, And it was actually enough for me to be able to build the app that I've got now. Really? Uh, but I hated running it because I'm not a parenting expert. I'm not passionate about parenting. Half the time, I fucking hate it. <laughs> I, mean, I love my I love my kids. Don't get me wrong, but oh no, I get itself, you. Ugh, not so fun. Um, <laughs> so like, it, it just it wasn't my passion, and I learned so much from building a business that I didn't enjoy running. Um, and I built it because I thought I need something else to make money because my other business was failing. Mm. Um, so you know, everything happens for a reason. It brought oh. me. Quite where I am now and now I just do things that I love and when you do things that you love you make money and that's the that's the biggest advice I could give to anybody um but um SJ it's been lovely having you on what where can people find you SJ Etsy Queen all across social media YouTube TikTok Instagram Facebook that's where you'll find me and my website is www.sj-lewis.com amazing thank you so much for being on um if you have enjoyed this podcast please subscribe i never i never remember to tell people to subscribe so hit that subscribe button hit that like button and if you've liked this episode give us a little star or a little review um if you haven't downloaded mad about money app yet please go and do that it is a free place where you can learn about everything related to money it's not just for people in debt it's not just for people who are saving it's also for people who want to make money and grow their wealth um i'm maddie alexander grout you can find me on all socials mad about money um official and linkedin mad about money official as well yeah no maddie alexander grout forgot my own name there see adhd (laughs) brain um it's been great having you guys listening please come again next week we'll see you next time